I'm Scott Al Miller. This is my everyday life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today I was in Managua and I was planning on bringing you guys a video about my trip with my children to Managua and showing you a drive across the city and giving you some feel about the capital. But instead I got home just in time to receive the news that the new route of the new proposed Grand Canal across Nicaragua from the Atlantic to the Pacific or vice versa, depending on how you look at it, has been announced officially by President Daniel Ortega. So this is a pretty big announcement and this just happened happened a few hours ago at uh, the uh, Chinese Latin American Investment Conference that's going on here in Nicaragua right now. It was actually happening in Managua while I was there. And uh, so we're going to do a, a hot take on this uh, as this has just dropped in the last few hours. We have very little information, but I am going to give you uh, the information that we have and some of my quick reads as to what this implies and means and, and how we should be looking at this. So let's get to that right after the bump. All right, well, I get to start with special thanks to the president uh, for certainly giving me a topic that's going to get me a lot more views than usual. So thanks uh, for that. This is a topic that I don't normally have a reason to talk about. So this is pretty fantastic from a content creator's perspective. Okay, so a quick little bit of history. For those who've watched my channel, you know I have some content both in live streams and special episodes about the former canal. The former canal was about 15 years ago. Uh, there was a famously very popular topic uh, with the idea that a Grand Canal was going to be built across Nicaragua, starting in the south, uh, coming up basically from Greytown, which is very, very far south on the Atlantic, uh, coming up uh, the San Juan River into uh, Lago Colcibolsa or Lago Nicaragua, as a lot of people know it, uh, going across there and then uh, continuing to the Pacific at uh, roughly at San Juan del Sur, uh, a little bit south of there. It wasn't exactly in the town. They weren't going to destroy the town or anything. But when we first lived here in 2015, some of the original markers were still there. So we were aware of the route. Uh, and it had long since been uh, dissolved and there was no talk of it. it. It had already just vanished from from the mindset. But there was this proposal and in the uh, mid uh, 2000s to, to early 2010s, this was a hot topic when people were talking about Nicaragua and, and obviously of great interest inside Nicaragua. Uh, that project was never realized in any form. Um, and so I have some videos that go into deep detail about that, why it made no sense, why the things that people were talking about were completely inaccurate, why uh, it never had any legs. And people uh, keep bringing it back up, even recently, and, and it, it, it is no, there's no such thing. It's, it's all just uh, misinformation, um, primarily coming from the United States, where it's a popular subject because Americans have a tendency to see Nicaragua, especially if it's uh, Chinese financed, because anything Nicaragua and anything China tend to be seen as very scary to Americans. And so it is often bantered about uh, by the media because it gets a lot of attention. People react to it. And so anything that's going to get people to react, all they have to say is, ooh, Nicaragua's really considering it, or there's some new financing or what's the update and they can just roll some old information and if you're not here to actually see that one it never made any sense and two that there is no canal and no one's talking about it and that's completely just an american news cycle thing you have no idea but this today is something different now before we go into that if we go back historically, the idea of a canal in Nicaragua goes way back. They've been talking about it since uh, before the Panama Canal. This is one of the original locations that were being um, kicked around in the 1800s for maybe a canal here to connect the, the oceans would be sensible. And uh, it was such a big deal that in uh, 1914, under military pressure, the United States forced Nicaragua to sign what was known as the Brian Chamorro Treaty. Uh, which guaranteed that Nicaragua would either never build a canal or it would be America's canal if Nicaragua ever built one. Of course, this was just uh, a treaty that, you know, it was an occupied country. The United States was in control of the country and just created a treaty with itself. Uh, had that treaty still existed today, it would not be honored because it's a new government in 1979. There is no treaty with the former government. However, it doesn't matter. Under Nixon in 1970, the United States officially rescinded the Brian Chamorro Treaty and it does not exist. But Throughout the 20th century, Nicaragua was both legally and militarily barred from even considering putting in a canal. Since that time, of course, it has been one of those ongoing discussions of maybe a canal would actually make sense. It generally doesn't. Uh, and Panama built the new larger canal in 2015. 
making the whole thing generally seen as moot. However, Panama is suffering from severe drought. It has major problems keeping the canals running. It does not have the capacity that people wish that it did. And so there's a lot of reasons why an additional or larger canal uh, might be beneficial. Also, the Panama Canal is generally seen as being heavily controlled and influenced by the United States. So of course, there are reasons why other countries, basically all other countries, would see having an alternative route as being at least a great additional option. Option. It would also help with keeping price competition down and so forth. Uh, so there is reasons why people might be interested in and Americans might fear an additional canal existing somewhere in the region and especially fearing if it's in Nicaragua, which is basically the least friendly uh, country that could possibly have a canal with the United States and especially if funded by China, the key competitor for canal traffic. This is not a military or, or political thing. This is purely a commercial thing. But if China has better prices and better access to better canals, the canal being much farther north, is quite beneficial for most trading partners because most of the traffic is going either between the US East Coast or Europe and uh, parts of Asia that are at least at the level of Nicaragua or north, Panama is not exactly perfectly aligned for that. It's fine, but it's not ideal. Nicaragua sits in a much better place for that. So there are reasons why Nicaragua could be considered for this, why it may make sense to have a canal there if it was feasible. So you can watch my old videos if you're looking for Additional color on that, we've covered the history pretty well. And if anyone's looking for deeper dives on the history, let me know, get down there in those comments and we'll, we'll look into doing that, that's fine. But on today's video, I wanna talk about what has happened today. And so let's just start with that. Today, there was a uh, regional economic uh, uh, foreign investment uh, forum, for lack of a better description, uh, here in Managua that was going on. And at that event, uh, of course, uh, President Daniel Ortega, the president of Nicaragua currently, and for the last uh, bit of time, spoke and presented a new proposed uh, canal known as the uh, Grand Canal Interoceanico de Nicaragua. And this is the same name for the idea long ago, but let's be really clear, this is a completely, utterly, 100% new project. The idea of a Nicaraguan canal goes back more than 100 years, way more than 100 years. Uh, so, so there's this general concept of a canal, but a project to actually put one in has only been even seriously proposed or seriously considered a few times in history. Uh, and whether the one 15-ish years ago uh, was actually a serious consideration or not is a separate topic, but this one is officially being proposed by the government. And this is very different than any canal discussion that I have seen thus far. Now, importantly, from what I've seen, and I'm going to link this below. Now, this is verified, right? This is verified uh, by TNA is the, the link I'm going to share, share with you, which is uh, one of the government television stations. And, um, uh, La 19 um, posted this on Instagram, which is an official outlet. So this is two separate official outlets with the exact same information, the exact same photo, which I'm going to show you. Uh, so we have pretty good verification. This is official. Uh, so let's just start there, right? So this is an official announcement in the last few hours. Literally, I'm going to post this on November 18th. This happened on November 18th. Uh, so this is a proposed canal route a new route for a project that is not yet according to the news. There is nothing that says that this is approved that it's going to happen. There is nothing that says that there is funding for this. There is nothing saying that the Chinese are involved. There's nothing saying that this is happening. That is not in this news whatsoever. I've read through everything and I do not see that. Maybe someone will have some more information. Just let me know. Send me links to official sources. Don't send me random weird things from, you know, unverified sources. It's got to be something kind of official. Uh, but if it says like there's, you know, I don't have every resource. I don't have every quote. If there's a spot where they actually do have funding or something, let me know. But I don't think any of that exists. It doesn't appear that any of that exists. Again, this is my hot take on this. This is just, I, I just have the same information that everyone else does. This just happened um, and I'm caught off guard the same as all of you. But I have taken time to look at the map. I understand what this terrain is, where this is going, what they're talking about. So I'm going to break some of this down. So, okay, that's what we have. New route is proposed. They're hoping that it gets some traction. 
that's where we are as far as we know. What is the root? Why is this so different? Why is this actually potentially viable? So what this is, is a overland route. The original route was to use a river, a lake, and a tiny itty bitty crossing of an isthmus that makes Panama look really wide. That had so many engineering problems that even non-engineers could go, nope, you can't do that. This, however, is a lot more ambitious, but honestly more logical, so it's got some potential. So the idea here is instead of going through an existing waterway and an existing lake that does not support a canal, and then having to do a tiny isthmus crossing, this is just crossing the main land width of Nicaragua, which is seriously, seriously ambitious from a uh, uh, complete distance to dredge and dig and, and maintain a canal standpoint. I mean, this is truly an epic distance for a canal and there's a mountain range in the middle. So you can see why this would be difficult. So things that we currently have. We have a deep water port in the Pacific at Puerto Corinto, not too far from here. It's basically direct from Chinandega to the water. That's where Corinto is. Go check a map. It's interesting. I have some videos on that town. Neat little town. Cool. Okay, on the east, in the middle, of Nicaragua's east coast is the Porto of Bluefields. Now, this is not a big deep water port. It's not going to handle anything like a canal, but it is currently in the process of being dredged and being turned into a deep water port. So that is logical that that effort could be used for both things because they're definitely going to need a port on both sides. You can't just have a Pacific port and let people go back and forth. Just like in Panama, you need a major port on both ends. So this is happening. So, okay, that makes sense and way better than, uh, than going to Greytown uh, because there is no port there and no possibility, no reasonable possibility of a port there. So the more or less existing or soon to exist deep water port at Bluefields will have, if this comes into fruition, uh, it will have a uh, 68 kilometer, that's a really long way for a canal, 68 kilometer segmento caribe, this is the Caribbean segment of the canal, will go from the uh, Caribbean uh, Sea or the Atlantic Ocean, depending on how you look at it, into what is going to be a new uh, artificial lake, Lago Artificial El Escondido. Now, this is meaningful to us because the name of one of our properties is El Escondido. Um, so they must have liked it and, and decided to use it for the lake. That's the only explanation that we have. Anyway, so a new artificial reservoir, for lack of a better term, which is quite a bit larger than Lago Apanas in Hinotega, would be created. Now, maybe this would be great because it could be used for hydroelectric. I'm just hypothesizing. Uh, this is a quite a large body of water. Not insanely large, but pretty serious. Uh, and that's just 68 miles from the Caribbean coast. Then comes the real engineering effort. So, so ships that were coming from the Atlantic would then uh, go 68 kilometers by canal and then a distance of maybe 10 kilometers, I'm just eyeballing here, across this artificial lake. And then they would enter a new segment of the canal, the Segmento Central, which is the big one. This is the one that is mind blowing. 252 kilometers. This one will go from the artificial lake. It will go to roughly the center of Lago Cosibosa or Lago Nicaragua, uh, but not actually into the lake, just near it. But it'll cross the mountains as it comes around the middle of the lake in southern Chantales, from where I can eyeball. I'm not everything is marked on the map. I think that's where this is. And then it'll turn northwest, skirt the lake off by maybe 10 kilometers, uh, go above it, uh, cross above uh, to the north of Granada, way to the north of Messiah, uh, and a little bit north of Managua, and go roughly on the north side of Tipi Tapa into Lago Xolitlan. Now, Xolitlan, why is this different? One, Xolitlan is not a major outlet lake like Cosibolso. So there, we're not talking about disrupting an existing waterway to get into it. That's way better. Two, it's a navigable lake, unlike uh, Cosibolsa, which, yes, it can take ferries, but it can't take cargo ships. Uh, Zolitlan has always taken cargo ships. It is a, uh, it's not a, um, a low-lying area that has collected water. It is actually a volcanic lake, so it's, it's a bit deeper than Cosibolsa. So this is pretty reasonable. There might still need to be some dredging. They don't mention that, but it's it, way easier. Also worth noting, this means that the, the route of the canal will go right next to the new airport that is set to open uh, at uh, uh, Puente, uh, uh, 
Puente Huete, which is right there uh, as it goes by. So I don't know if there's any tie-in there, but there is certainly potential for a logical additional port in Xolitlan that can take shipments to and from the airport. So that, that is pretty meaningful. That's something that Panama doesn't have uh, and, and, and really could be kind of practical. No one has mentioned that. I'm just, again, I'm hypothesizing based on the route and what I know is going on in the country, but it would be interesting. Uh, Xolitlan, the width here is 55 kilometers. So we're talking about a real distance is going to be covered on the lake, but nothing compared to the 252 kilometers that we were talking about on the overland route. That is really something. No one has done a canal like that anywhere in the region anywhere near that kind of distance. So the cost for that, the engineering problems for that, big, right? But it goes through an area that, uh, from my eyeballing of it, seems like there is potential. Is this going to be super disruptive to a bunch of small rivers and things? Yeah, there's a lot of big challenges. There's a lot of potential hazards to the country here. So we don't know exactly what's going to, one, we don't know that this is really going to happen. That is not in no way is this moving forward at this moment. Uh, and two, there's a, there's a lot of unanswered questions. These are not things are not things being addressed at this time. Uh, but uh, this is a far more viable physical route as far as impact to the country from my viewing of it. Uh, crossing Lago Xolitlan, it then comes out uh, very close to, and I will grab the name of the location in case anyone wants to really study this. It's uh, El Socorro. Uh, and I'm not saying it's going to go out through the town, but the town is like a couple houses. We're talking about a really small spot. And then it's, and it looks it looks like, right, this is a very loosely drawn map, uh, it actually looks like it's a little bit south of there, between there and uh, a place literally just known as La Playa, and there's an area known as the Brick Factories through there. This is mostly just open lakefront. There's there's really nothing there. Uh, and then in, the map shows it essentially passing through or just south of La Paz Centro, which I just drove through and took a video, uh, a video of today, right? So you can see some of the routes, a beautiful, beautiful open countryside uh, that we came through today that in theory would be getting the canal. The canal would then go west passing south of the city of Leon uh, and coming up on the Pacific coast right around the north side of uh, Isla Juan Venado, the reserve. From there it turns and runs along the beach but doesn't actually go into the water uh, behind Las Penitas and Ponaloya. Yes, you'll notice we're talking about a canal coming past my houses, right? Everything that I'm involved in would be within sight of the canal at this point. Uh, and then it would enter the water roughly at Los Brasiles, which a lot of people know as the home of Surfing Turtle, the Carpe Diem Eco Retreat. It is essentially an island we, we showed kind of, uh, showed it across the water from Ponaloya in a recent episode. We've been over there at Surfing Turtle in a couple episodes uh, a while ago. So you can go check those out. Uh, but this would completely transform Los Brasiles. Uh, Los Brasiles and um, uh, would make the canal come into the water kind of uh, underneath uh, Puerto El Barquito uh, and a, there's like a long sandbar. Hopefully it wouldn't disrupt the sandbar. Uh, they just have to dredge and then the ships would go through kind of a, a channel uh, and come to the Port of Corinto. So they would essentially be the Port of Corinto, but it wouldn't be what we think of as the Port of Corinto today. It would be like the Port of Los Brasiles uh, in Leon. Uh, so this is important. The way that the map is Tron, it is a new port that would leverage Corinto in Chinandega, but it would be the port of Leon, not the port of Chinandega, that would be getting the canal and then connecting to Bluefields. There would then be two additional ports on Lago Xolitlan. Uh, one would be in Leon, one would be in Managua. These are departmentos, not the cities. Uh, and then there would be uh, ports on the artificial lake way out in the autonomous territories. Now, is this a feasible thing? Does this really make sense? I don't know. I'm not, an, I'm not a hydraulic engineer. I can't tell you whether this is good or bad. I can tell you that for me, this makes way more sense from a impact to the country perspective um, for, for ecological concerns, for ongoing economic concerns. Uh, it seems to make a lot more sense than having it on the Costa Rican border, which is basically where they're looking at going before and destroying a river. Uh, having the port at Leon has a lot of reasons that that makes sense. 
um, potentially putting in train lines that connect a lot of things at some of these points would also make sense. Th those things are in discussion. Again, not, not planned, just those are things being discussed. Um, so I think that this is an interesting map that we have. It is um, an interesting idea that potentially a canal could be in these locations. Uh, and it does not seem to horrifically impact any existing communities of any size um, and leverages some infrastructure that's already in place. And Lago Xolitlan is already a heavily polluted lake uh, that needs to be addressed for many reasons. This may provide an opportunity to either simply leverage the fact that the lake is not in great shape and, and this isn't going to make it much worse, uh, and it may be an opportunity to make it better. Right, given the resources that are going to go into it. Um, and of course, uh, with Panama struggling so much currently and Nicaragua expected to not have a water shortage problem coming up on 2050, one of the very few countries in the world expected to have sufficient water supply, this does potentially have some sensibility that the other canal certainly did not. Um, and with Panama struggling so much and having no end to their problems in sight, this is reasonable, right? Uh, it, it is a time for this where, okay, I don't know. I'm, I'm very, I'm very skeptical of the idea of a canal uh, in this region. I think dry canals that people talk about having train lines across Nicaragua, train lines across Mexico. I think those make a ton of sense. I realize why uh, regular canals, water canals, um, have big benefits over dry canals. They move way more stuff uh, much faster, but they also have a much bigger impact. They're they're much uh, more difficult. You can't just take them up when they're done. However, that is a reason that they may want to have them, right? Train lines were removed in the past um, uh, through external pressure, and that's something that is can basically be avoided uh, with a water-based canal. So, uh, you know, being someone who lives in the Leon area and would be heavily impacted by the canal. Literally, I would have to drive over the canal every single time I go between the beach uh, where um, I own and, and my grocery store, right? It would be, uh, this would be an everyday part of our lives uh, for the, for the entire, for our entire future, right? This would be unbelievably impactful in unpredictable ways for us personally. So I certainly take a great interest in the fact that we're talking about putting in uh, this canal in such a uh, such an interesting location and so, uh, so close to us. Um, but uh, I also am very skeptical that this is so much digging. This is such an 252 kilometers just for that middle section. I don't think I said the Segmento Pacifico is another 70 kilometers. So the amount that needs to be uh, dug out is 68, 252, and 70 combined, which is, I think, 390 kilometers, if my really fast math is correct. 390 kilometers that has to be dug from the dirt, including going through mountains in multiple places. Uh, there's obviously ecological impact. A new lake has to be created. Uh, and then whatever needs to be done on Lago Xolitlan, which might be basically nothing or it might be a lot, plus creating the new port at Bluefields, which is already underway. It's a lot. It's, it's a truly monumental scale of uh, new projects. So it's not easy to say, yep, that's viable. Yep, that makes sense. Um, but this is the new proposal. Um, take it for what it is, evaluate it reasonably, expect that there, there is going to be a, a degree of panic coming from North America, as with any announcement like this. That is certainly part of the reason that this is announced. One of it is, uh, one of the reasons that I'm sure this is being announced is they're trying to, uh, you know, improve ties in the region. Um, it would improve uh, relations with, with uh, Asia. There's lots of reasons why it's potentially really cool. There's also really big potential negatives, right? That it doesn't really happen, there, that it causes a ton of ecological damage, that it doesn't have a positive economic impact on Nicaragua. We're not able to operate it with our own people. We're not able to build it with our own people. Um, 
the, the land needed for this obviously has to come from somewhere. There's a lot of logistical challenges uh, that have potential negative ramifications, of course. Uh, so, and, and then uh, there is the always trying to poke the bear to the north and say, hey, you know, we could have a canal here that you've been afraid of for more than 100 years, like really, really afraid of. Um, that has been a major theme of the United States' uh, military involvement in Nicaragua has been preventing or attempting to control any future canal. So uh, that this is being announced could be related to that. We don't know. Um, but it's important to remember this has happened before. Uh, at that time, yes, a little bit of research would have early on showed that the previous canal, you know, the financing that was supposedly lined up wasn't like a real valid guy. Um, it was obviously pretty quickly, it became obvious that the whole thing was a scam being ran out of uh, China and trying to take advantage of, of Nicaragua uh, at, uh, at a vulnerable time. This is quite different, but uh, canals are, are something that are always bantered about and, and spoken about a lot. So we need to be a little bit uh, reasonable that this could be uh, just a proposal, just an idea to see uh, what investors, like national level investors, may find it interesting, may find it important, and, and are willing to get into a discussion about it or other future projects. This could be an impetus to push for a dry canal and just showing, hey, look, this is what a canal would cost. We're, we're willing to do it. Oh, it's a, it's a huge, scary thing. Maybe a dry canal would be, a, right? This could be leverage. Could just be that. Uh, it could just be uh, national promotion. It may just be an attempt to get uh, the country on the map. It may be a, an attempt at international relations. There's a, there's a lot of things. Um, and even if this is accepted, if all the players are like, wow, this, this really does, like suddenly this proposal is different than others and this is really good, it... Um, it could be decades away. This could be a really long period of time before any of this even starts. And of course, every detail could change. Uh, so, so before you see this and panic or see this and, and, and rejoice or see this and just react in any way, take a moment to, to really internalize. This is just an announcement of a new route that has been proposed so that a discussion about a potential canal can now take place and put it into its historic perspective that we're talking about 120, 130 years of reasonable discussion about a canal uh, crossing Nicaragua specifically has happened already and, uh, and no one has ever taken a shovel out and started moving dirt. So, very important to keep in perspective, but this is a big deal that this is announced and is something we're going to need to be keeping an eye on and seeing what discussions come out of this, what announcements are made, what action is taken. Um, if a formalized final route that's a lot more detailed comes out that we can uh, make projections about and so forth, that'll be really interesting. And um, for me personally, this is something I'll be keeping an eye on because the canal comes right through the area of Leon, right? It's Sutiava specifically that is affected. Um, um, and Las Penitas and Ponaloya and Los Brasiles, all places that I'm involved with every day. So that's a really important part of this map. And there's a thing called Exclusa La Fuente uh, that is right here for us. And we don't know what that means because it's not mentioned in the article. So article be will be linked below. Uh, comments and questions, of course, get down below. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you'd like to help support the, way work, the work that we do here, of course, you can like this video, subscribe to the channel. You can watch another video that does an awful lot of good, believe it or not. Please do that. Even if you just let it play in the background, everything helps. Uh, make sure you are aware we generally on Thursdays try to do a live stream in the evening. So if you are new or you haven't been on the live stream yet, take yeah, grab yourself a a beer, have a snack, and join in. We go for a long time. We did eight and a quarter hours last week. Not going to do that this week, I'm sure, but it's a lot of fun. We have a great crowd. It is a cool thing to do, so, so think about joining us there. We have a membership group. If anyone is interested, there's a join button down there you can join. It's just $5 a month, and we do have a private discussion group that you can go check out. And uh, as always, there's a link above. You can buy me, or it's actually going to be below, buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me. It's like Patreon and helps us pay for the cameras and time that we put into this and travel and all those things to make this channel possible. It takes a lot to do this, and I really appreciate all the uh, support that you guys give. It makes a huge difference. Thanks for joining me. I will see you all tomorrow.